Hello everyone, I am Dr. Sikandar. Today I will be speaking on PET CT neurology applications. Now coming to the neurology applications on the PET, the most common and important is neuro-oncology which shows the tumor recurrence versus radiation necrosis. This is one of the important thing which is very difficult to be identified even on contrast MR, MR spectroscopy and other MR applications. So here PET is very important in distribution between the tumor recurrence versus radiation necrosis. Second is for the diagnosis, then grading, then seizure focal identification is one of the important entity dementias. So this is the important aspect which I will be covering today. A lot of dementia groups are there. How PET is useful in identifying and quantifying the different applications on the PET and their presentations in the dementia. Other applications like brain injury, vascular trauma, psychiatric applications like depression, schizophrenia, movement disorders with 18F dopa and miscellaneous infections like substance abuse. So coming to the PET imaging studies of the central nervous system, they are global or regional changes in the brain function such as glucose utilization, cerebral blood flow and oxygen metabolism, then development of specific probes, neurotransmitter receptors, second messenger systems and neuronal networks in the brain parenchyma. As everybody knows, the molecular changes precede the structural changes and thus we can do early diagnosis and there is a targeted treatment management which is based on functional rather than structural measures. PET tracers allow the study of a numerous brain functions in the normal and pathological conditions, then measurement of regional blood flow, glucose metabolism, enzyme activity, protein accumulation and receptor density in the central nervous system. So coming to dementia, this is a wide variety of applications in this. So it is a wide entity, a lot of conditions are there. So it is for assessment of patient with symptoms of dementia, early diagnosis of dementia, then differential diagnosis between Alzheimer's disease, dementia with levy bodies, frontotemporal lobe dementia and vascular dementia. And another important application which I will be showing today is epilepsy for pre-surgical evaluation of refractory epilepsy, lateralize and localize the functional impaired region with normal MRI findings. So Parkinson's disorders, differential diagnosis of Parkinsonism because Parkinsonism can be a typical and atypical and the diagnosis of atypical Parkinsonism such as corticobasal degeneration, multiple system atrophy and progressive supranuclear palsy. So coming to psychiatry, you have depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, stroke and assessment of the neuronal plasticity. So coming to positioning, it is normal as that of a CT brain and the important thing is to avoid or minimize head movements, head fixation may be useful, orbitometer line in parallel to the detector rings and standardization of the positioning can be done. So how you are going to quantify this? We have a standardized uptake values that is SCV value help in assessment of the uptake patterns and SCV ratios are created using an unaffected reference region. So quantification of CMR can be performed using arterial or arterialized blood input and the regional analysis should use manual or atlas based regions of interest or voxel based analysis ideally created or co-registered with the MR images. So in the healthy brain, you have subcortical, cortical gray matter, and subcortical level, caudate nucleus, putamine and the thalami which shows the highest uptake, FDG uptake, then cerebellar cortex and brain stem, usually they are lower in uptake compared to the cerebral parenchyma, then basal ganglia and thalami and white matter generally shows low uptake and can hardly be visually distinguished from the adjacent ventricular system. So coming to the different conditions of dementia, you have Alzheimer's disease, you have frontotemporal dementia and the DLB which I will be showing in different cases. Then you have Christopher Jacob disease, then Parkinson's dementia and atypical Parkinsonisms. So coming to the first case today, it is temporal lobe epilepsy. You have diffuse hypometabolism which is seen in the PET and fuse PET CT images. CT is not that much useful. You see normal temporal lobe but if you see the temporal uptake in both sides there is reduced compared to the other parietal posterior parietal and occipital lobes so this is definitely a case of temporal lobe epilepsy coming to parkinsonism you see parkinsonism dementia there is hypometabolism in the parietal and temporolateral cortices similar to the pattern in Alzheimer's disease but only the thing is you have preserved glucose uptake in the basal ganglia so that is the important differential between the Alzheimer's disease and the parkinsonism 
so this is another case which shows the diffuse evaluation of the functional evaluation of the brain parenchyma which shows multiple areas of orange and yellow and followed by the blue areas so all blue areas which are seen in bilateral regions are the hypometabolic regions while the orange and the yellow one is a normal cortex which shows normal metabolism so that is how the you will be easily identifying the hypometabolism which is seen in different uh, lobes of the cerebral parenchyma so coming to alzheimer's disease you have a hypometabolism in the parietal medial and posterior lateral temporal cortex and posterior cingulum so frontal hypometabolism may also be seen as a progression of the disease in bilateral but can be unilateral so preserved metabolism in occipital and sensory motor cortex basal ganglia and cerebellum is one of the important hallmark of the alzheimer's disease which differentiates from the parkinsonism so frontal temporal dementia you have hypometabolism in the frontal cortex anterior cingulum and anterolateral temporal cortex and the hypometabolism can affect the caudate nuclei so the cortex hypometabolism may vary in different forms of the frontal temporal dementia but most important frontal temporal name itself depicts so you have to be way easier for analyzing the frontal and temporal cortex so coming to dlb dlb there is parietal and temporolateral hypometabolism similar to the pattern in alzheimer disease and the occipital and parietal visual cortex involvement is important in differential diagnosis so hypometabolism may also be present in the basal ganglia sometimes it is like variation of the uh, dlb now coming to crucefold jacob disease there is distinct hypometabolism in the large areas of brain involving the right or the left hemisphere or bilateral in the most cases only the differentiation with other dementia groups is temporal lobes are usually less affected in cjd now coming to parkinsonism hypometabolism in the parietal and temporolateral cortices is similar to the pattern in alzheimer disease but here the hallmark is preserved glucose uptake in the basal ganglia so that is how you can differentiate with the alzheimer's disease so coming to temporal lobe epilepsy already i have shown this is another case of atypical parkinsonism atypical means there is a disparity between the right and left and it is not classical of the parkinsonism so there is lot of hypometabolism seen in the cortices in the bilateral frontal and parietal which is more prominent on the right side as compared to the left side so coming to the uh, important uh, aspect which i want to show how the quantification of the metabolic uptake is seen in the bilateral cerebral parenchyma and based on the suv values if you see the left side there is a chart which shows the frontal lobe l frontal lobe r and then you have mean suv value on the adjacent to it you have temporal lobes you have parietal lobes you have cingulate areas then you have a central region occipital lobe calcarean fissure basal ganglia mesial temporal lobe and cerebellum all are having left and right l is left r is right and you have mean suv values and the disparity of the difference between the right and left is the mean which is being shown in the chart here so here important is the quantification l is left r is right and suv values so with the suv values we can see the disparity between the right and left and that is how you are able to identify easily the metabolic activity of the cerebral cortex so this is automated structure by the software previously we used to quantify it but nowadays it is coming automated in the recent advanced machines so with this i hope you have learned how to differentiate between the different dementia groups especially the role of pet which is very viable and very important clinically sometimes there can be overlap of findings even in imaging also sometimes difficult but here pet can easily distinguish between the parkinson's disease alzheimer's disease and other forms of the dementia group